Why is Mexico looking like a better place to live than United States? See, there are many reasons, but one is, you can drive any shitty car you want in Mexico, and the government isn't going to stop you. Because Mexico is a country where people wallow in poverty, and they know true hardship, and they realize that if you restrict people from driving a car simply because it emits too much carbon monoxide or whatever, the country is going to be all the worse for it. You got poor people there, where a truck from the 1980s or a car with a shitty engine is all they have, all they can afford. And people of Mexico are sane enough to understand that their poorly functioning lives couldn't function at all if they applied the California Air Resources Board emissions standards in their country. Maintaining your car for smog compliance is not at all like maintaining your car for road safety. You know how many intricate problems an engine can have that a layman can never figure out? That even mechanics struggle to figure out? There are a shitload of stories where there is nothing wrong with people's cars and yet they can't pass a smog inspection. Onboard computers that malfunction and give out false readings, capricious sensors. The money that it can cost to fix the issue is ridiculous, especially if you're poor. People have spent thousands of dollars to get their cars to pass a smog check. People have driven hundreds of unnecessary miles burning gasoline just to pass a smog check. This isn't like replacing a brake pad or a headlight or a tire. Businesses have lost tons of revenue because they had to replace their large trucks or buses with newer vehicles to remain compliant with some of the toughest regulations in the world. Look what the government gets out of this. Look what the liberal government gets out of this. Millions, maybe billions, generated in fees and taxes on motorists. Smog check stations becoming a booming business. I bet that there was some lobbyist's wet dream that got catered to there. Meanwhile, if all you can do is afford a car that can't pass the smog inspection, that you'd be free to drive in Mexico, in China, but can't drive in the United States. What are you supposed to do? Depend on public transportation that's scarce and won't take you where you need to go most of the time? So less people drive and more people depend on public buses and subways, like in the communist countries? So it's like central planning. Look! I sacrificed the plan of driving a car that wouldn't pass a smog inspection. Because the government threatened me with violence if I were to do so. I say that's a big ruining effect on my life. Who knows, maybe if I drove to college I wouldn't be a virgin anymore. So I have a good reason to be pissed. My money was wasted. So this favor that I'm doing for all of you, for the government, by not driving a car that will fail the smog inspection, what is my reward for this favor? Am I receiving donations from the public for helping keep your fucking air clean? Not as if I'd be driving enough to even make one iota of difference to the atmosphere from one fucking car anyway. 
Do I get the respect that I deserve from the YouTube community to give me as many subscribers as you have given all the other inferior pieces of shit? No. This is what results when you comply with the leftists and their utopian ideas regarding their fake global warming bullshit. This is what happens when you comply with the Communist Air Resources Board standards of California. Same thing that happened because Elliot Roger was complying with the progressive feminist guidelines to how a man should regard and treat a woman. Think about that. Dig deep into those words. Discern the implication they carry. I am complying just like Elliot Roger complied. Discern the implication those words carry. And re realize if it's really better for everyone to abuse if it's really better for everyone to abuse me and not help me out financially. Because I ruined my life for something I don't give a shit about and don't believe in. I don't care if there is smog. There is smog hanging over Mexico City. I ruined and wasted my youth following the teachings of the progressives. I didn't defend myself from bullies at school for fear that I'll be expelled. Did it matter if I would have been expelled? Turned out absolutely not. It was a wasted fucking worry. It wouldn't have mattered one bit in my life if I had dropped out of high school. Same probably goes for many of you. Why didn't I defend myself from bullies? Because of zero tolerance policies ex imposed by the progressive left in schools against fighting. So now I'm supposed to respect and follow some kind of bullshit climate change regulations imposed by the progressive left, which is one huge con into imposing social control and collecting bigger taxes. So I'm supposed to become a welfare recipient and depend on the government instead. Why? I bought a car for $1,500 that drove all right and would have served me fine. But I had to abandon it, so now I'm supposed to do what? Look, look toward socialist welfare to help me raise money for a different car instead? Elliot Roger had so much respect for women that he was fearful to say hi to them. What did the progressive feminists give him for that? For putting females on such a pedestal? Nothing. They didn't give him sex. They didn't appreciate him for it. You know what they did? They smeared him as a chauvinistic monster and woman hater right after his heroic act of rebellion. Imagine that. They created a system that rejected him so much and treated him as a woman hater just because he was born a man that he really became a woman hater for real and afterward what did they do first thing in the headlines was Elliot Roger was being smeared as a woman hater this is the gratitude you get from the progressive left when you follow their prescribed social tenets you waste your money your life and you're destroyed in the end. And if you hear a word of gratitude for that, it will be hollow and meaningless. What do you get out of going along with their global warming nonsense? You lose your ability to drive a car. You lose thousands of dollars that the government steals from you in taxes and fees and repairs for your car and all the all the fees associated with your car. You don't get laid. This is the gratitude you get from the system for complying with their ideologies. I've literally been told by YouTube users to go on welfare. See, they don't want to listen to my content on YouTube, they don't want to donate, and they're all for paying higher taxes but they're all for paying higher taxes so welfare can support people like me so I can buy a car 
when I already bought a fucking car once with my own money and thus didn't need to be a burden on the taxpayer. Look at how my life has been wasted. I'm feeble, so I can't really work. I want to look like a teenage boy forever. I want to have sex as a teenage boy. And I was denied the ability to have sex as a teenage boy. See, I'm supposed to look sexy like this guy in Final Fantasy XV, but how long until I can actually live a normal life while looking like him? I was told in the 1960s cars were cheap and easy to get and you probably didn't have half the restrictions you have now. So. I, I, I don't have any sense of entitlement here, because there is no rational reason why the present day generation, or the generations to come, shouldn't enjoy the same freedoms as their parents or grandparents. If your pr parents or grandparents got to grow up in the 70s, and they didn't have to worry about a security camera, didn't have to worry about a cell phone camera. They didn't have to follow ridiculous levies imposed on car owners. There is no reason why this generation or any future generation shouldn't have the same. And a change in technology is not an excuse to fuck everything up. The whole world wasn't nuked into a nuclear waste wetland for future generations just because a nuclear bomb was invented, why should a future generation then accept a surveillance state just because security cameras are cheap to make and footage is cheap to store? Think about how your grandparents or whoever got to live in a world where they weren't recorded all the time in public where they could say things without worrying a cell phone is leaking their words online that could hurt their ability to keep a job. How they could drive shitty cars and not have to pay exorbitant fees. How they didn't have technology for, for DNA evidence. The present generation is no less entitled to, the, to these freedoms if air is dirty, dirty because of cars, there, there needs to be technology that cleans the air itself, but doesn't affect the cars or the drivers. That's how a sane person would approach the problem.